The 65th session of the UN Commission on the Status of Women ended its two-week-long gathering on Friday by adopting a document ensuring women get equal representation in government and public sector leadership. The agreed conclusions acknowledge that temporary special measures such as quotas and increased political will are needed as an enabling pathway to this goal. And joining me to discuss this is the Executive Director, Live Abundantly, Dr. Ama Onyerima. Good to have you join us, Dr. Onyerima. Um, when I went through um, the resolutions from that um, UN meeting, something jumped at me, which is the fact that uh, at that meeting, they observed that when you look at the COVID-19 tax force across the world, um, women are absent, majorly absent. Only about 24% of those tax force have women. Um, what does this mean in terms of how we have been, uh, how women have been, you know, secluded in a society? How does this reflect that? Well, thank you very much for having me. It is disheartening to see that sort of data, but let's be realistic. What the pandemic has done is to show very blatantly the disparity, the inequality, the discriminations, the biases against women in the workforce, whether you're looking at government or the public sector. And it's become even worse because so many women have lost their jobs. But what we need to do is to begin to look at how we address policy Recently, there was an article in the paper about um, making it possible for there to be a female IG for the Nigerian police. And I was really astounded to find that women who are going through the same training as the male counterparts can't even rise to the highest level of their positions um, within their, their fields. Um, it, is, it is very important that we begin to address these issues because until we do, then the issues concerning women do not get the um, attention that they deserve and this sort of inequality continues. Um, you know, equality is a human right, it's a fundamental right. Women have rights and women should be attain, able to attain the highest level of office so long as they um, meritously have that qualities or have the qualities as well as the training necessary for those positions. So um, one of the agreed conclusions is the uh, temporary special measures, measures such as quotas um, to enable a pathway for women in governance. But we've seen um, quote 30 percent. We've seen this affirmative action over and over again being reiterated. But in most countries, um, it's still a dream and not a reality. So how do we make this a reality? Well, women need to push for this to become a reality. We have to accelerate gender parity. We cannot continue to have a government where a very small fraction, seven women out of 109 are in the Senate or um, 13, 13 women in the House of Representatives. It is very crucial that women begin to speak up and that we challenge the biases, the microaggression and the, discri the discrimination that women face within the government and also in the public and private sphere. So yes, quotas are a wonderful way to sort of have affirmative action, but if you don't have the basics such as equality bills, if you don't have access to education, if you don't have access to skills training and education uh, at the highest level, um, how do you begin to have that representation? So quotas are a great way to start, but we have to go beyond that. It is high time that women are recognized for their contributions to the society as well as um, national development. I like that you mentioned um, um, issues around education and all because people will say that it is one thing to, uh, to you know, canvass for quotas, but to have women who are qualified to take those positions because women have been, um, over time, you know, left in the background in terms of education and qualification for um, these positions. Um, Dr. Ama Yerima, Live Abundantly, Director, Executive Director, Live Abundantly, thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much for the opportunity.